Okay, in uh, chapter 7 we're going to focus on techniques of integration and these problems can get rather involved. Uh, it's nice to have a few basic in integrals down, these basic patterns we've been looking at so far this quarter. Um, besides all these basic ones, there's a few more I would suggest you throw on at the end here. Um, look at number 12 through 14. These are ones that um, that, that come up a lot. You should have these handy as well. 12 through 14 says the integral of tangent natural log absolute value secant plus c. The integral of secant is the natural log of secant plus tangent absolute value. And then this one is kind of messy, but it, it does come up unfortunately way way too much. The integral of secant cubed is one half a secant tangent plus one half the natural log absolute value of secant plus tangent. Okay, so know those. Now, this first technique, integration by parts, is probably the most common. Yeah, it's, it applies in lots of situ situ situations. Before we do that, though, let's re review. Um, if y is a function of x, then the differential of y, remember what that is? That's not the same thing as the derivative, is it? It's, it's equal to f prime of x times dx. It's, so it's just a notational device. For example, if u equals x squared plus 1, what is du? The, the di differential of u becomes 2x times dx, right? Okay, so here we go. Integration by parts works like this. It allows you to change the integral from one form in, into another. One function will be your u, the other one will be your dv, and, and perhaps this integral over here might be easier to compute. Okay, so the, the trick to this technique, though, is to figure out which, is, which function is u, which function is your dv. And my hint is, this works in a lot of cases, let u equal x to the power unless there is a natural log or an inverse trig function present. Okay? So in this first example, if you want to integrate x tan squared of x dx, let u equal x and then dv would be uh, tan squared x dx. Uh, we're going to want to int integrate this, so what we're going to do is change tan squared x to secant squared x minus 1. Then du becomes dx, and then v becomes uh, the integral of secant squared is tangent, the integral of 1 is x. So what does integration by parts say? This integral can be transformed into u times v, so you get x times the quantity tangent x minus x, minus the integral of v du. And this, see this integral over here is easy to compute. Uh, remember, the integral of tangent is natural log absolute value secant, integral of x is x squared over 2. So when you distribute the, the minus sign and um, combine like terms, you can combine the x squares. So your final answer is x tangent of x minus x squared over 2 minus the natural log absolute value secant plus c. Pretty nice, huh? On this second one, if you follow my advice, you're going to let u equal the inverse tangent. So that, that, that means that dv would have to equal x dx. So du, the derivative of inverse tangent, would be 1 over x squared plus 1 times dx. And, DV, and then v becomes x squared over 2. So integration, if, you, if you make that substitution, then uv becomes this, x squared inverse tangent of x over 2, minus integral of v du. So you get minus 1 half x squared over x squared plus 1 dx. Now what do you do with this? Well, it turns out you can use long division on this. This is another piece of advice. If the degree, if you have a rational expression and the degree of the top is greater than or equal to the degree of the bottom, I would suggest using long division over here. You end up with dividing x squared plus 1 into x squared. It goes in once, and there's a remainder of negative 1. So look, the, the, in, the integrand, instead of x squared over x squared plus 1, can be written as 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 1. And that's easy to in integrate, right? Because um, the integral of 1 is x, and the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 is inverse tangent of x. So when you distribute the minus sign, you get this. Nice. Okay, let's keep on going here. This one's kind of tricky. We want to integrate this. Um, it turns out on this one, I don't think it makes much difference what you let u equal. Let's let u equal e to the x and dv sine x dx. That means that du has to be e to the x dx and v would be negative cosine x. So integration by parts says it's uv, so it's e to the x times negative cosine of x minus the integral of v du. So you get minus, uh, it becomes a plus, doesn't it? e to the x cosine of x. Doesn't look very encouraging, but um, if you don't give up and try it again, 
you'll let u equal e to the x and then dv will be cosine x dx that makes du e to the x dx and v equals sine x look what happens this integral here becomes uv becomes e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx that may not seem like it's that great but you notice the integral is on both sides we have the integral of e to the x sine x over here here we have minus e to the integral e to the x sine x we're going to add this integral to both sides so we'll have two times this integral it looks like this see two times the integral on the left side and on the right side what you have left is negative e to the x cosine of x plus e to the x sine of x and all you have to do now is divide by two and don't forget the plus c so this is your final answer uh, negative one half negative one half e to the x cosine of x plus one half e to the x sine x plus c very nice huh all right how about this one we want to i want to talk about how to evaluate a definite integral using integration by parts remember the the hint i gave let u equal the natural log of x that means dv will be the dx so du would be dx over x and v would be x so this integral can be written as uv which becomes x ln of x minus the integral of v du. When you multiply v times du, you just get dx, right? But notice you have to evaluate the whole expression from 1 to e. So anyway, so when you plug in e, well the integral of dx is x. So when you plug in e, you get um, e times 1 minus e, so that becomes 0. And then here you get 0 minus 1, so the final answer is 1. That's the answer to the integral. All right, let's do a couple more here. So in this one, you want to integrate inverse sine of x. Um, follow that hint I gave you. Let u equal the inverse sine of x. That means dv would have to equal dx, right? So that means that du equals dx over square root of 1 minus x squared, and v would just be x. So integration by parts gives uv becomes x inverse sine of x minus the integral of v du. So you get this integral. But this interval here is not that hard. Um, for this one, you could just make a simple substitution. Let's use w instead of u. I think we already used u once. Let, let w equal 1 minus x squared. And then dw is negative 2x dx. So negative x dx becomes dw over 2. So that's what, that's what happens on this second integral. You replace negative x dx with, with uh, dw over 2. That makes this a plus. And this becomes w to the negative one-half, see? So to finish the problem, when you integrate w to the negative one-half, you, uh, you get uh, w to the one-half over one-half, which you get a two there, the twos cancel, so this is, this is your final answer. Don't forget to um, substitute back in terms of x. x inverse sine of x plus the square root of one minus x squared plus c. Last one here. Now in this one, Sometimes it might be helpful to try a substitution before you use integration by parts. Or for that matter, you might not even know if you're going to use integration by parts, but just a substitution might, might be nice. It might make the integral easier to compute. If you make the substitution w equals square root of x, then see what you got here? You end up with dw equals 1 over 2 square root of x dx. So therefore, you're going to have to substitute for dx. dx equals 2w times dw. So the integral, you get the sine of w times 2w dw. Now, furthermore, you're going to have to switch the limits of integration. It, but it turns out with this um, substitution, uh, like for example, when x is 0, w is the square root of 0, which is still 0. And when x is 1, w is the square root of 1. So the limits of integration don't appear to change, even though we did switch them. So now what do you do? Well, now we can use integration by parts on this, I believe. You have w times the sine of w. Let's let, um, let u equal w and then um, dv equals sine w dw. So du equals dw and v will be negative cosine w. So you end up with this. You end up with uh, uv becomes negative w cosine w minus the integral of v du. So um, you get plus the integral of cosine w dw. So anyway, um, don't forget the 2 outside here. So when you distribute, you get this, and we're evaluating the whole thing between 0 and 1. So when, when you evaluate it at, at 1, you get negative 2 cosine 1 plus 2 sine 1. And when you evaluate it at 0, this drops out, and so does this. So the answer is uh, 2 sine 1 minus 2 cosine 1. 
We'll see you later. Bye-bye.